In this video, we're going to be doing a very basic overview of body fat percentage. We need to know a little bit about body composition. So body fat percentage is one part of that. So uh, we have fat-free mass, which would include the muscles, the bones, the organs, and everything basically then that is not fat in the person. And then we have fat mass, which would be the fat. So let's talk more about the fat-free mass for just for a moment though. Um, Typically for athletes, um, having greater fat-free mass means they're going to have greater muscle, maybe a little bit of bone, but mostly greater muscle mass. Um, so people, oh, athletes tend to want to increase their fat-free mass um, because it's good for most um, athletic events. Not all, but most. Um, so it's going to be um, really, really good, obviously, for power and strength athletes as well as athletes that need a lot of local muscular endurance. Um, uh, it's not going to be quite as good for uh, some of the endurance-based athletes, think long distance running, um, because it leads to additional mass they have to carry over the course of the race. Some muscle mass is still good for those athletes, but maybe an excessive amount of muscle mass is not going to be helpful and might actually hinder those sports. Um, but for the most part, most athletes want to increase their lean muscle mass. Fat mass, on the other hand, um, is uh, something that is extra weight to carry um, during an athletic event. So most athletes want to decrease their, their fat mass to a healthy level, but to decrease it um, lower than what the average population tends to have. Um, uh, fat mass is good for some things, mostly for energy storage. There's a lot of ATP that can be liberated, which is our energy unit in our body. So there's a lot of energy in fat that can be liberated and used during athleticism or exercise. Um, and so we do need fat in our bodies in order to do that, both for uh, athletic reasons as well as health reasons. Um, but generally speaking, less fat usually means better athletic performance. Again, to a point. Um, most athletes uh, uh, for men are going to be between 5 and 15% body fat. For women are going to be between 10 and 18% body fat. Um, so this is sort of just generic athlete profiles. Um, keep in mind, uh, as I've already alluded to, you do need body fat and you don't want to be too low with body fat because you can start running into um, various issues with uh, your health as well as with exercise performance. Um, so there's a term called essential fat, which basically means the minimal amount of fat the person can have with having normal bodily functions. Um, now this does vary by person, so not everybody can get as low as the values on this screen, but these are the values from the ACSM's uh, primary textbook, the, their guidelines textbook. Uh, so for men, below 3% body fat, you're likely going to start seeing um, some health and physiological issues. For women, below um, 10 to 13%. It's a little bit of range there, again, because not everybody's the same, and some there's some discrepancy in uh, the data out there. So below these essential fat levels, you should definitely expect to see some negative health consequences. For some people, there are negative health consequences above these levels, and this is actually something we're getting uh, much more aware of in the exercise uh, research community, um, things like the female athlete triad and also now the male athlete triad that they're uh, starting to recognize in uh, research as well, is when people have uh, consistently low body fats and it can lead to some issues with hormonal balances and um, bone density and various things like that. But in sticking to just what um, is in the sort of ACSM guidelines right now, don't go below 13, oh, 3% for men, 10 to 13% for women. Um, uh, being a little bit above, that's probably a good thing. All right, so um, for health purposes though, so this is not talking about athleticism at this point, just sort of the general population, um, the ACSM considers it satisfactory for men to be between uh, 12 and 23% body fat and for women to be between 17 and 26% body fat. Um, and I say the satisfactory with the, the quotes because um, there is not a standard that everybody agrees to about what is considered good body fat percentage. This is the reason why we don't generally use body fat percentage in order to identify if somebody is considered obese or overweight. Um, we more use it as a way of determining what their percentile rank is or a categorical rank specific to the percentile rank 
for body fat. Again, we don't typically use this to determine someone's overweight or obese. We would use uh, body mass index or BMI uh, more commonly to do that. I've already have a video talking about the basic anthropometric uh, measurements, so I'll put a link in the description below this to that video. As exercise professionals, we need to be uh, looking out for signs of eating disorders. Um, it's very common in some sports for people to have eating disorders, especially the sports where a leaner physique tends to lead to greater exercise performance. Um, so think uh, long distance running, um, cycling, uh, all the uh, aesthetic uh, type activities and sports, think cheerleading, uh, gymnastics, they oftentimes will um, have very low body fat percentages and uh, sometimes that can be driven by disordered eating. So it's uh, again, if you're working with those athletes, it's something to be aware of. Um, there are concerns with having a very high or very low body fat percentage. So um, above normal body fat percentages uh, means a greater likelihood of obesity or obesity-related illnesses. So um, things like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, um, and several others. Being below normal, uh, so being sort of under fat um, leads uh, to a greater likelihood that the person might have some sort of eating disorder like anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. Um, it also increases the likelihood of the athlete triad, so both the male and female athlete triad. Um, and so those are all very serious conditions as well that you would want to avoid. And there are other ones as well that um, are associated with low body fat percentage that could cause some issues in further health. Um, this is just sort of ones to look out for. With that in mind, yeah, you need to be able to determine what the optimal weight of the person would be if they were to achieve the body fat percentage that they're looking for. Um, and that body fat percentage should be something they look up in some sort of normative chart um, based typically around the, the good categories, uh, good to maybe excellent categories where you want to be for most uh, people, both for health and, and fitness reasons. Um, and so uh, in order to calculate optimal body uh, weight, you need to know their fat-free weight and uh, again, their target um, body fat percentage, uh, which you know they may or may not be their optimal body fat percentage. Um, so in order to calculate fat free weights, um, you would do uh, their current weight minus their current weight times their current body fat percentage. So again, you need to do their body fat percentage uh, measurements, so body composition measurement in order to do this. So this, these are some basic calculations that may be useful um, if you are doing body fat percentage on a person. I'll put links in the description below this video for example calculations on how to do optimal body weight um, uh, calculations, both by body fat percentage, and you can do a, a version of that using uh, body mass index as well if you aren't doing body fat percentage. It's not as good, but it's something you can do. Um, I'll also put a link in the description below to uh, the video I've already done on anthropometric measurements um, that are a little simpler than these measurements I showed here, and they're also quite a bit cheaper and quicker.